So we are here at the ALF Museum in Claremont, California with Gabe Santos, who's the collections manager here. And we're about to take a trip back through time by checking out their fossil collections. So you ready, Gabe? Ready. <laughs> So Gabe, what are we looking at here? We are looking at trackways that are about 200 million years old from the early Jurassic. Early Jurassic, so are these dinosaur fossils? Yeah, as far as we can tell, a lot of these have that shape that lets us know that they're made by dinosaurs. Yeah, they do have like a, that three like clawed shape. That's yeah. really cool. So what are some things we can learn about these particular tracks? We can't really figure out what animals made them, but we can learn a lot about what they were doing while they were alive. Uh, so. We got a whole bunch of different kind of species here. Let's take a look. What do, what do we got? Uh, we've got some really cool stuff. So we've got things like brachiopods. They might look like bivalves, like clams and shells, but they're actually not. They're their own group of animal that have their own shell. Oh, so they're they're like that, but they're but they're completely other other group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Almost, it does look like like something you might even find on the beach today. Yeah. We've also got things like crinoids. So these are these weird animals. Some people think they look like plants, but um, they're not. They have a long stalk on the top of their head. They've got their um, feathery arms that they use to get filter feed out of. So a lot of cool stuff in there. Oh, so they're not plants, but they're they're an animal instead. They just mm -hmm. kind of stick there. Yeah, they stick out of the ground and just filter feed with their feathery arms. That's really cool. So what kind of environment do these guys live in? So the Kaiba formation is a limestone formation, which means it was made in some sort of shallow sea, um, really cool salt water. Okay, so this is this is under uh, like an ocean underwater then where all these guys lived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this would have been it wouldn't have been like an ocean like you and I could like jump in today. This would be like a totally alien planet basically. Yeah, it would look very very different. Very different animals, um, very different um, corals and things like that. Very cool. So Gabe, what are we looking at here? We are looking at a track slab from the Coconina Sandstone. Okay, the track slab from the Coconina Sandstone. So, uh, who made these tracks? Great question, we actually don't know. <laughs> so, so, so it's a mystery. Yeah, when you have trackways, you don't have any evidence of the actual animal that made it. Like, feet are kind of the same through a lot of animals. So you can kind of get a general idea of what made them. So here, we think that some sort of reptile and some insect or maybe a giant arachnid might have made these tracks, but because we don't have the actual animal specimen with the tracks, we will probably never really know what made these footprints. So what can we learn about whoever made the, these footprints here? That's one of my favorite things about paleoecology or learning about trace fossils. You can learn more about an animal's behavior and like movement than you can from the bone. So from here, we can learn about what animals might have lived together, right? We can learn how fast an animal might be moving by measuring its footprints and its, its, um, its gait, as it's called, the like, distance between its feet. Okay. Um, you can even learn a little bit about how they might have interacted with their environment. So these, are, these were made on a sand dune, away from like, any like, water or anything. And so, so this was like a, almost like a desert. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these creatures were living in a desert and walking along a, a sand dune early in the morning and leaving these footprints that got preserved over time. All right. So Gabe, what are we looking at here? What we are looking at is a ripple mark. These are traces of ancient environment from about one billion years ago. Holy crap! That's a long time ago. Can't even think how long ago that is. Nope. So this is really neat because there's a there's a lot of like ripple marks here. How did this form? Well, basically what happened is a billion years ago, this was the bottom of some sort of river system or maybe like a floodplain, and there was flowing water over here. And as the water flowed over, it deposited new layers of rock. And as the water movement kind of deposited them, it kind of made these tiny little sand dunes or ripples. And those got preserved because those got covered very fast. And so we have that um, ancient trace of the water. And we can even kind of tell the direction that the water was flowing. So which, which way was it going? I think based on the way that it was kind of going from here to here, because okay, you can so kind of like look you at- you to me? Yeah, you can look at where the ripples are and kind of look at the shape. Yeah, yeah, okay, so it does kind of almost look like if you were to go walk into like a creek, it would, you'd almost see something similar to this, and even, even today. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date 
and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram at Outsider.